processamento de informação. E aí vocês conhecem já a programação, não preciso repetir, mas uh, eu vou chamar o, o presidente da IFIP agora para fazer a primeira apresentação. E uh, agora vai ser em inglês tudo. I'd like to invite Mike Hinche, that's uh, IFIP president, to give the first presentation. And uh, please welcome him. Uh, thank you very much for having accepted this uh, our invitation to give this talk. And we have also uh, we are transmitted this this talk uh, live, so there are connections there as well to different parts of Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, so Mike is a well-known uh, professor, and uh, you, I also uh, distributed all the information about the, the all the, the speakers. So. Just passing to him now. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you everybody for coming. And on behalf of all of us, thank you for your invitation to join you today. Um, I'm going to give a very short presentation just to let you know who or what IFIP is. Uh, maybe the name is a bit confusing because information processing is what in the 50s and 60s they called what we now call IT or ICT, but we didn't see a point in changing the name. So I'm going to start with a very short video. All the people in the front row are bored. They've seen this like 500 times. Right, Hugo? <laughs> so I think probably the video explains better than I can, but uh, IFIB was established in 1960 uh, by UNESCO uh, following a probably one of the most important computer congresses in the world, which was in 1959. And as I said back then, it was called information processing. We've come a long way since then. 
So we're a non-governmental, not-for-profit umbrella organization. So we bring together a number of computer societies from around the world. We follow a, a, a UN-type model, so we have one member per country, although we've recently changed that. So we're, our goal is to achieve worldwide professional and socially responsible development and application of ICT. So we accomplish this by enhancing international cooperation amongst individuals, national and international organizations in all aspects of research, development and application of ICT. And we do this by exchanging information, by educating people, by enhancing public understanding and making policy statements and bringing together professionals in conferences, workshops, in working groups, in technical committees and in various other ways. So we're unique in our structure that allows us to do this because what we do is we bring together more than 55 representative organizations. So as I said, typically we have one member per country and SBC is the member for Brazil and that's why we're here. Uh, altogether we have roughly half a million individual members because each of the members of those societies is a member of IFIP. So if you're a member of SBC, you're a member of IFIP, you get discounts at IFIP events and you're welcome to participate in IFIP working groups and technical committees and so on. So we have about three and a half thousand people who are actively involved in these working groups and technical committees. They come from industry, they come from academia. We have a young professionals group called Interiet, and that's particularly focused on people under 35 years of age who are either still studying or have recently gone into the job market and are in the early stages of their career. We have a number of very important relationships, particularly with UNESCO, who was our founder. Um, we're looking forward to having our 60th anniversary at UNESCO headquarters in Paris next year. And we work in a number of UNESCO events. In particular, uh, we work with uh, WESIS, which is the World, uh, Sym the World uh, Symposium on Information Systems. And we have two events at that, which is actually next month in Geneva. And today we were asked to be part of the opening ceremony and to give a speech of that. So that's something big that we didn't have in the past. We've been working with the UN Commission on Science and Technology for Development. And again, we have an event at their meeting in Geneva in June. And I took part in their, what they call an intercessional, back in January. Uh, we work with the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, who of course is, is also a, a United Nations body. And we're a member of the International Council for Science. So we have individual members, uh, we have society members, we have volunteers, uh, we have people who do the actual technical work, and of course we have a small staff uh, based in Luxembourg, which is just outside Vienna in Austria. So our membership is we have a country representative member, so each country that is a member of IFIP has one member. Typically it's a computer society, there isn't a rule that it has to be, but usually it is, and in the case of Brazil it's SBC. We have some members at large. We have two categories of this. We have international members at large. At the moment, we have one, which is the ACM, which many of you will be familiar with. And we have just one national member at large. We just introduced this category last year. And the one national member at large is IT Ukraine. So Ukraine is actually the first country to have two members. We have associate members like VLDB, which many of you may be familiar with. Also CEPUS, which is also an umbrella group but it is for an, an, an umbrella group for members in Europe. So it's all members of the European Union. And we have a number of honorary members. I think at the moment it's eight honorary members. Uh, these are people who have given distinguished service to IFIP over the years, and we recognize that status uh, by giving them membership, and that means they can attend our meetings, our, our important meetings, our General Assembly, which is typically in September, October, and they have a vote in that. As a substructure, we have a technical assembly, which is composed of 13 technical committees covering all sorts of different areas. These are divided down into working groups, so there's more than 100 working groups who get together and, and do research, run workshops, run conferences, run events, and some of these work together. And to recognize this, we have a number of domain committees where working groups work together on a topic such as, for example, um, disaster mitigation, uh, Yuko. See, she's not paying attention. <laughs> and IoT and uh, cloud computing. 
Uh, we have a number of standing committees that address various issues and task forces. We have a members' uh, society's assembly, so the members have a smaller grouping that represents their interests. Uh, Intriet, I mentioned already, is our young IT group. And then IP3 is a very important part of, of IFIP. It's concerned with professional practice. And uh, it is dealing with codes of conduct, codes of practice, and also certification of members as being up to a certain level of competence in doing their jobs. I won't go through the individual uh, technical committees, but they range from foundations of computer science, which is essentially theory, through software, which addresses all sorts of aspects of software and education, all the way down to artificial intelligence, human-computer interaction, and entertainment computing, which is, as you might expect, games, but also things like uh, entertainment systems in cars and so on. So we range quite a, quite a, a whole area. So we have a domain committee on health informatics, on cloud computing, disaster risk reduction, and the Internet of Things. Terrible name, but we're stuck with it. So in the future, we want to expand our membership. We want to focus on producing quality, top-class outputs, which we've been doing for the last 59 years or so, and we want to keep doing that. We have a digital library that we're expanding and, and enhancing. Uh, we're giving inputs to policy-making bodies like UNESCO and the UN. In fact, we've become much more active in that in the last couple of years. And, of course, we want to co collaborate with various other people in various areas and to address societal needs, specifically the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, thank you very much. That was just a short intro to IFED. Any questions? If not, okay. It was such a good yes, no. <laughs> <in our> re <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike, for your introduction to IFIP. I'd like to invite then Professor uh, Franz Hame. Oh, you have a question, okay. As you, you were very fast, I, I didn't process okay. so quickly. No, I, just, um, I have two questions. First, which is, what is the relationship with the uh, uh, UN in terms of uh, political decisions? I mean, are you submitted to UN or wha what is exactly the IFIP, what it decides something? It's, it's totally autonomous or it's, it, there is some dependency? And the second question is about finance. How, how is it funded? Well, the first question is, is, is fairly simple. Um, we don't have a vote in the UN, but we contribute to UN policy decisions. We can give input to the UN. So we don't actually have a, a vote or a, a technical voice in that sense, but we can contribute. We work with a number of various committees and commissions within the UN, and they listen to us, they talk to us, they invite us to come and speak at their events. So our feedback from our members is given to them that way. On financing, uh, each member pays a fee, which is based on the UN scales. So it's related, in theory, to how rich your country is. In reality, it doesn't quite work that way, but it ranges from quite cheap to fairly expensive. Um, but it's, that's one income that we have. The other income is from publications. We get royalties on our books. Uh, Kai can tell you exactly how many books we published last year, but it was in the 120 range, something like that. 48? The other ones are the freebie ones, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but so, we get, so we get royalties on 48. Uh, we also have um, other means of publications. Uh, we have a number of workshops and conferences. Some of these, as if you've run a conference or a workshop, you know many of these make, make losses. Some make a little bit of money, and so that's, that's another form of income. So basically it's from running events, publications, and the member fees. I uh, don't think I want to answer that question. <laughs> okay, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, actually it's IFIP is a non-profitable organization, so it has to run just to to pay the the expenses of operation they have. But uh, okay, but I <laughs> okay, I'd I'd like to invite. Uh, Professor uh, Franz for for your presentation